Hi there, I'm Brad from Audio T. I have travelled today to Essex, to the wonderful home of Ruark Audio, and I'm joined by Alan O'Rourke, founder, managing director of Ruark. Hello, Good Brad. To see you. Good to see you, yeah. Sadly, it's not that sunny outside. I thought I'd come to South End on sea. And sunny really South sun End. Sunny <laughs> South End. <laughs> not today, I'm afraid. False advertisement, right. Yes. So, <laughs> there we go. So, um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of Audio T's customers will know Ruark because it's a brand that's been around for a long time. They yeah. might have seen it in places like John Lewis on, on high street shops as well. Yeah. But they might not appreciate the history and the, the prestige behind Ruark as a company. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you start a little bit by telling us that how it all started? Like, Because obviously this, this all started with you and your dad. Yeah, yeah, a long, long time ago. A long time ago, I think. Um, it would have been, I was guessing, in the early 1980s. But... It's kind of long story short, my dad was a um, cabinet maker. He started off and, he, and I guess we, I just sort of grew up, he's originally making furniture, but very early on he got involved with the uh, early days of the fledgling hi-fi industry, UK hi-fi industry, which was at the time growing and growing. Mm. Um, people like Bush, Hacker Radio, Dynatron, they were the early, and then people like Wolfdale were there. Mm. And he started making cabinets for these guys, and that gave him the um, enthusiasm. I suppose he became a very early hi-fi enthusiast himself, and he'd bring these cabinets home from work, and we would, you know, put them together in his garage, put different drive units in and things like that. And it became a bit of a hobby, so we were, we were sort of DIYers as well, sort of in building our own hi-fi. In those days, you could build hi-fi, like amplify kits, yeah, and you could do do that do the whole thing. And uh, and I remember the early days of stereo when it came in. You know, you'd have like Concorde taking off in your lounge, and <laughs> the, and the, the flying Scotsman <laughs> yeah. rumbling through. Um, and so it just it, it stuck really. Um, you know, I grew up with it. I I loved it. Um, he um, he eventually broke away, set up another company we had before Ruark called um, Diasis. That didn't really, some people may remember that. He had a, a moderate success with that. Mm. Unfortunately, he didn't quite have the, the wherewithal business-wise to, so that sort of, that sort of unfortunately failed. But then together, we set up Ruark in 1985. Year before I was born. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, wow. Okay, okay. But, and, and if I'm right, it was, uh, it was actually a set of bookshelf speakers that you guys had. Uh... Yeah, we had, we, we had the, the Ruark Sabre yep. and the Ruark Broadsword. Right. And um, they were the first two models, and we spent quite a bit of time refining them and, and developing them. And, and literally, it was just the case of we had this little workshop in Rayleigh where we used to go together, make these, these speakers up, yeah. and then we used to put them in the back of our car and drive out around the country, you know, visiting dealers, demonstrating them. And, the old and, days of the, the, the sort of door-to-door -door salesman Yeah, almost. yeah, I mean, Audio T would have been one of them back there, or 80 Labs, I think it was, it was called back, back yeah. then. 80 Labs, I'm sure it was 80 Labs. Oh no, it was Absolute Sound and Video. Yeah, that's. I think with Before. Audio T, there's a lot of yes. um, there's a lot of different names because obviously it had a lot of different arms and branches that all conglomerated together yeah. to become yeah. Audio T. That's right. Yeah. Um, but obviously with the with the Saber, that was the the smaller of the the that's two right. speakers. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And am I right in thinking that the idea was to try and get something that sounded like the big speakers, yeah. but confined to a smaller space? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also because. I think we very quickly gained a sort of reputation for the quality of our cabinetry. Because mm. we, 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 you know, my dad in particular, being a furniture maker, he sort of realised that they get, you know, the product into people's homes, you had to look nice. Mm. So we, we fairly quickly got a reputation for making stuff that's, that sounded good, but also looked good as well. Mm. So we'd go the extra mile in terms of the cabinet design, the internal construction with bracing and damping and things like that. So, so yeah, so the Sabre and the Broadsword were the first first two. And, um, you know, we got, some, we got some good dealers behind us. And then we introduced this big three-way system called the Ruark Accolade, right. which is a big, no, big, big floor standard. I think at the time that was two and a half thousand pounds, which, which was a lot of money. Would back, have been a lot of money, back, yeah. Back then. But that, Bought a success, and from that we also started getting export inquiries. Mm. So within a few years, we had a good UK market, and we were exporting particularly to the Far East. Mm. You know, it was a so we, we we had a really good run. We had then we had the Talisman, 
Talisman was a, and the Crusader were popular speakers for us. And that was back in the day when, you know, vinyl was, when we started vinyl, it was all about, you know, turntables. Yep. And then, of course, CDs came along. Yep. And uh, everyone's saying CDs doesn't sound, sound as good as vinyl, and it still doesn't. I mean, even well, it's, to this it's, day. The, it's the age old debate, isn't it? Analog yes. versus digital. And, yes, you know, that's I right, think that's yeah. a, something that you're never going to answer. But um, um, it's, you know, I'm a big vinyl enthusiast. Yes. We, yeah, yeah. we, we all appreciate yeah. vinyl, but yeah. obviously, um, before we delve into that, because I think that's a separate thing altogether, um, am I right in thinking that you, as a as a brand, have a bit of history with Audio Team? In that yeah. um, it was one of the first dealers to, or as you say, through one of its many different faceted uh, brand names at the time. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess I mean you know, when we built up a bit of a, a bit of money behind us. We started doing the audio T shows, mm. as it were, back then, back in down in Bristol, yeah. and it, that was a that was one of the major events of the year. Really, yeah. you had the Hi Fi News show in uh, in Heathrow, sort of thing, and you had the Bristol show. Yeah, two major shows really, and we got involved with that. So every February, yeah, we get the van packed and we trundle down to, down to Bristol, and it was just great being able to. To set up in these you know, the hotel rooms, you would dress the room, yeah. make it look good, but to meet your customers and to and to hear what people's comments and things things like that, you know, get a good and feedback. I suppose, obviously, for for Ruark as a brand, that's quite important because you know if we bring it forward now to to products like we've got here the original r1 and the the latest incarnation of it mm. these are lifestyle products mm. you know the the core element of music's still there the musicality mm. of the product but you when when was it that you guys made the move from bookshelf speakers to these all-encompassing music systems i guess really that started the real crux was when Obviously, when hi-fi, so hi-fi was hi-fi was strong mm. probably until the late nineteen nineties, yeah. And then the focus started to turn towards vision, yeah. So people really were turning away from, you know, I, I said this before, you know, when the I think Hitachi, Hitachi or Panasonic launched their first plasma TV, mm. I remember it being about six thousand pounds for a forty-two inch plasma TV, yeah. And and. And they were selling shed loads, lots of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, and I, because I think the thing is, is that the thing is, with it was cool. You said your brother-in-law, look, look what I bought, sort of thing. Yeah. You've got this forty-two-inch plasma flat panel TV on your wall, and that was cool. And I think that, and whereas if you said to somebody you spent six thousand pounds on a pair of speakers, they think you were a slightly or a high fi they think you were crazy. Yeah. So, so I think then we noticed a turn, and then the focus started to get more on vision it wasn't just about a pair of speakers it was about having multiple speakers mm. in your in in your environment and speakers started to get smaller and smaller and then you had these speaker packages and um we just noticed that it was a turn in the market but we the bbc had been pushing dab going from analog to digital broadcasting yeah. and um we just thought it'd be a, a nice idea to develop of really good quality radio. I'd always loved radio. I'd always been right from a kid playing with my grandmother's radiogram, yeah. going through the stations and just loved, just loved it. Radio Caroline, all the power yep. stations. Um, so we just thought it would be good to develop a little high quality radio that we could sell through our hi-fi dealers. Yeah. And, uh, and at the same time, we thought it would be good because it would bring People are something in the window that would get people in. So, in essence, the R1 is a little high fidelity speaker. Yeah. So, it's a proper little cabinet, a high fidelity drive unit with a, a hi fi quality amplifier inside and tuner. Um, and really, I suppose it, what was interesting with it is that certainly we weren't only appealing to hi fi enthusiasts, we just opened our market, we just people started to. Get comments from customers buying it because it looked nice. Yeah. But then they'd get it home and say, "Wow, this really sounds good too." And uh, our intention initially was to keep on with both the, the radio side of the business mm. and the hi-fi side. But it, this very quickly took over. So we you know, we, we followed the course of least resistance, and so the range. And that was about two thousand and four when we started to develop this. Right. 
and we launched the company in 2006. Initially, we called it Vita Audio because it was because the idea was to keep the two brands separate. So right. Roark was our hi-fi side. Vita was going to be um, the reason we didn't carry on with Vita because when we tried to properly register the brand name, there was all sorts of complications with. Vita and biotics and yeah. lots of, we suddenly found there's lots of Vitas out there and we, we wanted to register the name properly and so we decided to drop that and we came fully back to Ruark. Which I think is a fantastic idea because um, obviously there are a lot of um, speakers that would look like this on yeah. the market. There's a lot of brands out there that do that. Some might argue it's an oversaturated area. But what you do is create lifestyle speakers mm. and solutions for the home yeah. uh, with a heritage and a prestige of a hi-fi, British hi-fi manufacturer yeah, behind right. it. Yeah, that's it. Which yeah. you just, you, you don't get from your sort of equivalents like, you know, well, we won't say the, the B say, word. No, we don't say the no, B no. word. No, no, no. Um, but, you know, it's, it's something you don't get. And I think uh, something that I would say from my own personal listening experience with the Ruark speakers is you don't get that overly compressed, overly saturated sound that you do from your competitors. Yes. It is more open and airy with a nice sound stage. And you, you listen, you're like, how, how are you getting this sound from such yeah. a small box? And I'll admit, when, uh, when the first lockdown hit, I was working in one of the shops uh, running the online store, dispatching all the orders. So if you ordered online, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, it, and I, I was listening to music through an R1 yeah, the whole yeah, time. Yeah, and I was yeah. blown away. You know, I had the option of so many different uh, solutions in that shop, but yeah. I just popped an R1 on my desk and it was fantastic. You know, being able to jump between the radio and then yeah, Spotify yeah. or no, Tidal I, or whatever, you know. When, when, when we first did that, the R1, I, we just, I, was just, I took one of the early prototypes home and I was just listening to it. I was doing some work on the computer. And I'm sort of listening, thinking, and really just um, perhaps, as we were saying a little while ago, for the first time, really listening to the music, mm. rather than listening to the sound, just really enjoying, because it was natural, it wasn't forced, it was, and there was some, I thought there was some bass coming out, I think this is really, this is really, really nice to listen to. Yeah. It was easy. I guess it was because it was easy to listen to. You were not listening to the hi-fi, you were listening to the, the music. But, but, but I think that, you know, I mean, but the same goes now, you know, we make products, we've always, I've always said this, we make products that we want to own ourselves. Yeah. So unless we're completely happy with it, so the products we make, are, even with the speakers, it was just an idea, okay, okay, okay we're gonna do a two-way, three-way, you know, it, but it's got to be this, it's got to sound good, it's, you know, it, it, so unless we were completely happy with it, we wouldn't, you know, I would never say we've been a commercial company no. in terms of just churning products out. So it's safe to say that music has, you know, without sounding cheesy and cliche, but music has been the core yes. for the brand ethos. Yes, yeah. And obviously we, we spoke briefly before, um, and you're a guitarist, yes. you know, yeah, yeah. so you, you appreciate music from behind the instrument yes, and also yeah, yeah. in front of it as well. And, you know, as someone that plays guitar really badly, um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's something that, you know. It's good these days. Yeah, well, it's, we won't jab, don't worry, yeah, we're yeah, not gonna yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's one of those things that obviously um, you do uh, listen to and analyze music in a very different way. And would you say some of that influence has gone into the, the production of the products as yeah, well? Yeah, I, I, I think definitely. I think definitely working with real instruments and working with other people and listening, yeah, we have a pretty good idea of, mm. of what things should should sound like. You know, and I think, and even with the speakers, so much went into it is that, you know, I said like, a, you know, what makes, say, a Martin guitar, mm. you know, a sound or a Fender Gibson sound like, you know, you can get a another acoustic guitar. I think acoustic guitars are a good analogy because you can pick up, they look identical, but you pick up one and strum it cheaper one yeah but just that you pick up say a martin or something and you just, and it's just got that timber about it that you i think just it is a good analogy because obviously you know when you're talking about brands like martin fender gibson taylor yeah. they are for the most part handmade yeah. in the countries of origin so america yeah. and so forth and uh when you pick out some of the cheaper ones, arguably some of the cheaper Fender acoustics, things like that, um, they can often be made in the Far East. Yeah. And there is a craftsmanship that goes into a, a product, not to say that products that are made in the Far East is bad, because obviously that's where half the world's made. Where we are, yeah, but you know, yeah. it, that's where we are. 
it's the, obviously the conditions they're made in and, and the materials that go into it, but the, the core element, the driving force behind it has to be the ethos and where you come from. Yes, yeah, and, yeah. you know, that, that hi-fi element and that appreciation and understanding of sound and I, music. I think, I, think, I think it's knowing how to put things together. Mm. I mean, I think that's the, it's like, you know, the guys, the good, they know the materials, they know the woods, the combination to use. It's the same with, you know, it's, this product is a recipe. Mm. So it's not necessarily about it's knowing how to blend those ingredients together yeah. to get the sound the sound that that that, that you want. You know yeah. I mean? So so it's um, yeah. Uh, so we've used always up till now we've always used analog amplifiers because we mm -hmm. like the sound of analog. It adds some warmth to it. Yeah. Um, some of the new digital lamps that are coming through now are are getting much much better. Mm. And I think unfortunately we are going to probably be forced down the digital route. Yeah. Because with power consumption, standbys, and things like this, it may be that you know some of these older technologies are going to be phased out, as we're seeing everywhere. Now. Yeah, which you know is understandable. These things have to move with the times. But yeah. I think one of the um, going back to something that I touched on briefly, which is you are a lifestyle manufacturer. These products are made to sit in every room of the home. You know, the amount of kitchens that must have yeah. a, a R1 yes, yeah. or living rooms or garages, whatever. You know. How is it that you, because from, from what I understand from watching some of your other interviews, it's about two years, the process from start to finish to yes. design and, and construction and everything. How do you stay ahead of the curve with uh, designs? Because obviously this is a very contemporary design. The wooden grill on the front's fantastic. You can tell that this was obviously a, a child of the, the sort of early to mid noughties because yes. of its design, whereas this is very much in keeping with now. How do you sort of, um, Look at the next trend and and realize what you're going to do. I think I think you just absorb. And I, I like looking through you know architectural magazines, mm. you know, interiors. I like looking at cars. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at the materials they use inside cars, you mm. know, dashboards and and things like that, and looking at where it's going. And just I think you just pick up these things, and I think definitely at the moment we're going through a bit of a mid-century oh, yeah. renaissance. Yeah. You know, I look around, we, we, this is our new um, reception area, and the way we've decorated it with the, you know, the column radiators, yeah. and the, it's, it's something you just pick up on. But, but rather than copying, we try and take our new, a new take on it. So it's a, yes, it is, it is mid-century, but it's mm. just added a bit of modern Modernity to it, I guess. Modernization? Modernity. Modern, 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 we can invent a new word for this. That's, that's, yes. that's exactly yes. what it is. But it's brought it up to date, I think, I think really. So there's a lot of this at the moment. There's a lot of people talking about retro. Yeah. Um, I think, I think the, the thing at the moment is that what we're seeing now is that there was some fantastic design, like Eames and that in the mm. 1950s. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and good design lasts forever. Yeah, you know, I think. I mean, I mean, look at a classic nine, like 911, the Porsche, and the Mini. Yeah, they're all designs which are okay. They've been. You can see it straight away. You see it's a Mini. Yeah, but they just brought it up to date. It's just sw uh, slight tweaks and adjustments yes, for the modern you know. age. And um, you know, as as we talk about like uh, changes in materials and manufacturing processes, something that a lot of people really look for now in their products is sustainability. Yeah. Would you say that Ruark as a company, is, is that something that is a conscious thought or? Oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. I mean, um, in terms of the packaging, we're looking at sort of totally recycled. Um, in terms of the products, you know, everything has to be FSC, F it's FC, FCSC certified in terms of the wood materials, right. things like that. But I think that, you know, more than anything else, I think you no, know, we're, we're making products which we, Hope we're going to last, you know, 10, 20 years. Mm. You know, and, and this is one thing we look at in terms of technology. You know, not, you know, we put tried and tested technology in in terms of, you know, um, platforms like Spotify. And yeah, so that's going to be around. But also having things like auxiliary inputs on the back. So if mm. a new technology comes along which isn't built in, you can still, you know, with an adapter. Plug it in and, and, and include it. It's, it's something that I quite like about your products is that they still have the analog connectivity. You know, yes. a lot of people yeah. have just, uh, just completely skimmed all of that from there yeah. in favour of things like Bluetooth. Yeah, yeah. But 
you know, you can, you can pretty much connect your products to anything, which yes. is, yeah. you know, bearing in mind you're one of the few hi-fi manufacturers not making turntables, which yes. is, yes. <laughs> you know, yes. given, given the revival of things, it's... Uh... We've never, I mean, people said that, so why don't we, but I, there's plenty of people doing it very well. That yeah. I don't think we, you know, we, we, we've always, even the speakers, you know, we reluctantly started made some subwoofers. Yeah. Um, but we worked together with a, a local company that actually made some, Actually made um, sub from yeah. modules, and we de developed it together. It wasn't it wasn't something at the time we were speakers. Now we do what we do now. It's um, you know we want to concentrate on making this better and better. And I think that's right. Um, you know, and with that in mind, talking about the range of products available, arguably you've probably got one of the the smallest catalogues of products going. Even when you take into account the different finishes. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You, you know. Yeah, we don't, I mean, and I think we're very conscious of that as well, that we wanted something where, and it's working for us, but when people buy an R1, they then go and buy an R2 or an R3. Mm. R2's coming, there's new, all new R2 coming soon. A, it's a exclusive. Oh, we, <laughs> yeah. we might but, even get a look at one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, so there's a logical steps up throughout the range. And, so, and we, we know it's, it's great that people buy an R1 for their kitchen or their bedroom mm. and they like it, so they go and buy an R5 for their living room yeah. and things like that. So, or the R7. Know, or the R7. Which that, I know is a flagship product, but that's, yeah. that, and that takes on that mid, that is like the embodiment of the mid-century yes. uh, sort of radiograph, isn't it? The, yes. The, but radiogram. Just a, or radiogram, radiograph, like the, it's the modern. I mean, that was something, I mean, that was a, a project of mine. When we first came up with the idea it was, this idea to recreate the radiogram and to have something that's just a piece of furniture because mm. that's what the radiogram used to be. I mean, before people had pianos in the front room, yeah. part of it, about it, but then pianos were, unfortunately, a lot of them were thrown out and smashed up. I think we were trading, but then we were replaced with radiograms. Yeah. You know, and, and, um, and then the radiogram became the, the what do you call it, the, the, the stereo system, I yeah. suppose, really, then separates. And um, and I guess where we are now, we we are seeing this sort of you now. Our, our ranges are primarily all in, all in ones. Yeah. But we do have plans, perhaps in the future, to do a you know, system with separate speakers again. Yeah. You know, go with that, and it all goes full circle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, starts, it just it evolves, and it's. But I think that there is a. You now we think that there's a. You see that with the name, like the name, Unity. Yeah. Lovely products. You know, but yet again, perhaps a product that with separate speakers, you can plug a turntable into it, and we're getting back into that um, mm. hi-fi system thing. Yeah, again. absolutely. And again, you know, you, you mentioned the name Unity, which is something that can multi-room with their other products. Yes, yeah, yeah. Same can be done with yes, Ruark yeah, yeah. And, and your products. So yes. there's that flexibility moving forward that yeah. you can you can have that multi-room functionality. Yes, yes. Um, do you think that if you were to do a separate system, you'd always have that core element of everything's got to be able to connect to it and your other products would be able to connect to it? Or do you think you'd go for the standalone route? Or I think no, it'd be, there'd be a link. So if you want to, so for instance, if you had a sort of one, of, this, is, this, is a, this is a dream for the future. This is yeah. not going to happen. This is for a good, good few, few years yet because our product plan, and we had, we, our product plan goes like two or three years, years yeah. ahead. But um, yeah, I think that this interconnectivity, so if you, if you had you know, another product of this range in another room, you could link them together. Yeah. How many people really use multi-room? I don't, I'm not sure it's, um, I, you know, I do. I mean, I literally, I have, we have an, an R5 in my dining room. I have one of our MRX speakers in the kitchen. Yeah. And I quite like the fact that I can link the two together. Yeah, of course. So when I'm wandering between the, the, the dining room and the kitchen, you can keep that sound balance yeah. between between the two. Um, we haven't got it right throughout the house. No, I'm not sure that. that but that's just... no. Some people I think do, and yeah. they're obviously more popular than me because they have parties and they have fat people over. And you know, yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah. do any of that. I no, sit in no, the one room and no. listen to music, or you know, me and the wife will be in the kitchen cooking and listening to music. But um, one thing that you don't have on your any of your products at the moment is voice control. Yeah. Do you feel that the voice control is something that will stick around, or do you think it's something that we might we're all interested in now? And no interest in it at all. Really. It, not, not for our products. It, it, but anyway. that's that's fair yeah. enough, you know. I think that um, I think there will be an element in the future that perhaps you will be able to if you've got a uh, a voice control unit, 
you will be able to talk to it and say, hey, turn on my mm. uh, whatever in the, in the kitchen and play me some jazz or something yeah. like that. That element, but we're not interested in building it in. Because I think, yet again, it's a technology, as I said earlier, that could that will date. If you build this technology in, you know, you can buy these voice control units for like 30, 40 quid. Yeah. So it's easy to put it in the in the wee bin. But it's yet again, I think we just need to get away from this constant throwing things away. Te cause disposable te technology. Yeah, disposable it's technology. Just, yeah. Yes. You know, I think, you know, put out like, like, the, like this. I mean, we're now, so the original R1, we launched in 2006. So we're now 16 years old. Yeah. And we know that they're most of them. They're all still going strong. Yeah. And people are using them every, every day. They come down, they put the kettle on, put their R1 on. It's the first thing they do in the morning. They, they tell us that all the, all the time. I know that we've, uh, the Audio T have customers that are building on something that they would have bought, like the R1, as, as we said previously, yeah, yeah, yeah. buy the R1, then you yeah. move up to the other models. So, that, and that is nice that, that yeah. there's, I think what I like is that there are a range of products that are accessible to a lot of different audiences. Yes. You know, they don't, it's not ultra technical, so it, no. it, it, no. it disparages the older community. Um, it's not stuffy and lifeless, so it stops younger people getting involved to it. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you, you sell the, uh, the little stereo speakers. Yes, the MR1s. The MR1s, they're which, really popular. you know, they're a hugely popular system for us. Like, yeah. we get a lot of customers buying, say, for example, a Riga uh, One Plus. Yes, yeah, yeah. And, and going, that's a perfect yeah, yeah. combination. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because Riga is literally a stone throw away yeah, just from Just up there. the road there. They're literally, yeah, right. you know, I think I've got a passable on my way home. <laughs> you will. So, it's, <laughs> you know, and again, it goes back to that companies doing things either better or specialising in a yes, yeah, and a, yeah. a way of doing yes, things. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, that it, that's the beauty of your product. You can combine it with other systems yes, to an yeah, extent. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, um, but do you think there's going to be any big advancements coming from Ruark in the near future? Anything that you can talk about? Nothing at the moment, no. Nothing, nothing today. I mean, unfortunately, because of the lockdown. I mean, yeah. because of, we, we have got stuff in development, um, which we're very excited about. Mm. Um, but, but too early, that would have, should have come probably that, this year. Yeah. But, um, but because of the um, component shortages, it's a real frustration at the moment. We yeah. just, you know, as we said, developments aren't taking two years, they're taking three or four years at yeah. the moment. Because until you get that final piece of the jigsaw, you can't finish it. And well, so, don't, don't worry too much because you're having a lot of building work going on at the moment. Yes. It, yeah, new yeah. demo rooms and everything being sorted. So I'm going to come back. Yes. Because you've got the brewery down the road as well, we have, which yes, uh, you right. have a lot of relationship with. Yes, so yeah. I will be back, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll probably do a little factory tour when, when you're all set up. Good. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and then we, we can finish it with then, the <laughs> then we can show the new, the new products. So There we uh, go. There may be a surprise at the, at the Bristol show in 2023. And for those so, of you that don't know, the, uh, the Bristol Hi-Fi show is Audio Team's baby. So um, we haven't been able to have it for the last couple of years with everything that's been going on in the yeah. world. And fingers crossed, we'll be back for 2023. Yeah. And you'll be there. We will be there. Or will you be there in person? I will be there in person. Will you be signing people's R1s for <laughs> them? And, uh, if they want me to. <laughs> bring your Sharpies and to. your R1s. Yeah, yeah. And you can get a signed personalised one. Well, Alan, thank you for having me. Thank um, you. It's, it's, you know, it's lovely to be here and it's, yeah. uh, it's great to see behind the scenes of the products. And yes. uh, as I say, I'll come back when it's all finished and uh, yeah, be great. we've be all great. set up. You're so. welcome at any time. Oh, that's lovely. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you very much. And thanks again for watching. Uh, as always, I've been Brad, Alan, and uh, behind the camera is David, your son, who's uh, very kindly been uh, filming this for us. Yes, yeah. He's doing a fantastic job. Nick Spielberg, so he's watch got, out for him. He's got to edit it next. He's got to, that's <laughs> it, yeah. We <laughs> might just be... Make, make us look really more handsome. Yeah, we didn't me, have more younger. over makeup, so do your magic, David. And uh, thanks for watching, and don't forget to sub subscribe to uh, Audio T and Roark's YouTube channels, and uh, we'll see yeah. you soon. Thank thanks you. very much. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Cheers. Thank you. Take care, guys. Bye now.